Hi everyone, this is take two because my first take, I did not hit record. <laughs> so I, I started with the other one was saying, I was going to say, it's your boy Zach. And then I can't remember if I actually do that on the videos on this channel. That's how I start all the videos on my other channel, uh, but not this one. So anyway, I, I just jumped into uh, saying, you know, last Starfighter, I just saw it. And I think it's the first time I ever saw it. And the reason for that is that when I grew up, uh, I was like 11 when this came out in 1984. Perfect age to see it, but... There was no theater in my hometown. In fact, if I remember correctly, you had to go all the way into the city. You had to go through like two other suburbs to get to um, uh, the, the big city that had a, a movie theater. So we actually did have a theater, but it didn't show movies. It had been converted into a church, which is weird because I don't remember any, anyone ever using that church. It's, I, what it, oh my gosh. This is, it's, it blew my mind as a kid why our town didn't have a movie theater. It could have supported one. And at least for like dollar theater, oh my gosh. I don't have any problem with religion, but I'm really, really angry that the only you know physical movie theater in town was a church. Anyway, if I could have seen it, I would have seen it. But back in the day, you know, you'd see movies as a family so it was expensive so the average family would see like three or four movies a year so this one didn't make the cut but if if i could have seen it i would have seen it so it ended up being that i had to like you know go catch it at my rich buddy's house and and rich meant you had hbo uh that being said um uh i would just catch little bits and pieces of it so i think this might have been the first time i ever saw it all the way through which is weird because I have very fond memories of seeing it. I talked about this in my Dark Crystal. Uh, I actually didn't see it all the way through until I was an adult. And the first time I saw it as an adult, I didn't like it. Second time I did. Because in my, in my mind, I kind of pieced together, like seeing it all out of order, you know, at, at, like different times. And then I, I filled in the gaps with a different movie, which I liked better uh, in my mind. But um, I think I might start doing all of these... Um, you know, like 1980s, uh, I'm going to call them B movies. Like I just added it to my uh, watch list on YouTube, uh, like Enemy Mine. I'm probably going to watch The Never Ending Story, hit up all these, you know, B movies. So uh, even though I enjoyed this and it was my first time really seeing it, I was actually frustrated because I kept like and I kept saying like, this is good. This is good. A couple things aren't good, but like I'm, I'm judging them too harshly, like what is the problem? And then, like, in the last couple of minutes, I remembered the concept of B-movies. B-movies wasn't just lower budget. B-movies was like, you didn't really have the big stars. You didn't have the big director. You know, it was on a second tier. And once I remembered that B-movies exist, I go, oh, this is a great... Th yeah, okay, so s stop saying what if Spielberg would have, you know... Uh, directed it stop saying what if ilm would have done the special effects stop saying x y and z realize this is a b movie and for a b movie it's a b plus so the last starfighter is about this wiener guy named alex alex is my biggest problem with the movie um who lives in a small town although uh it sounds like it might have just been on the edge of a small of a large town um, it's one of those things where it's like, they keep talking about the city and I was like, I think the city they're talking about is Los Angeles. Uh, it sounds like you're in a small town that might be like a 20 minute drive to a major city. Um, but he, uh, he lives in a trailer park. I believe he's, I think he, yeah, no, he's college age. I think he's like a freshman or sophomore. So he's like 19 or 20, but he's still living with his mom. He's still hanging out with the high school crew. He's getting kind of sick of it. And he has some plans, which are to, oh, no, no, I think this might be the summer after he's uh, um, uh, graduated. He has some plans. His big plans are to go to college somewhere else. This is my biggest problem with the thing. Number one, Alex is a whiner who doesn't really pick up the call to action until, and I looked at the, the clock, one minute and or one hour and 12 minutes into the movie he actually says all right i'm gonna be a starfighter um everyone else kind of like probably would have done it earlier um so he has a dream to do something somewhere else except for his dream is kind of lame i would have made him some kid who 
grew up and always wanted to whatever join the navy see the world and then he goes and for whatever reason asthma or i don't know maybe he smoked a doobie because it was 1984 he can't get in and so he's like i've always wanted to be this one thing and i'm stuck and i'm stuck in this small town which seems to be pretty close to a large town um it was just like i felt like his motivation was like i want to go to college like everyone else at a different college and it wasn't like harvard it, just, it was just like some other college they keep talking about you can go to city college and maybe he applied to state He applies for a loan. He doesn't get it, so he's stuck in his town. There's this uh, pretty cool um, uh, uh, video game called Starfighter. He plays it. He gets a high score, and that um, uh, sends a signal to this guy named Santori, who is kind of like a, a headhunter. He's finding people for the Galaxy Armada, Star Armada, Star... No, there's the something. Some kind of federation. Uh, the, re the when I w finally realized that this is a B movie, it was because of the scope, because it's a, it's a good guy, you know, federation of literally like twelve ships, against an enemy armada of fourteen. <laughs> like it's a very very modest, and I go, oh, this is a B movie. Yeah, there would have been, you know, a hundred ships on either side, big star destroyers or capital ships. They have like this command ship, but it's not really that big. Um, it wouldn't have, it, you know, one of the things about the Star Trek movies is they were kind of B movies, but not really because they always, they almost always had ILM special effects. Um, so they had that highest level of like model making and all that, that type of thing. So it's, he gets recruited by Centauri and then he kind of basically gets kidnapped and he goes up into space and then they're like, hey, um, this is the situation, the storyline in the video game was real. Uh, we were just testing out people and recruiting things. Now, a lot of this breaks down because they they later say it was like 100 planets in this good guy group. And it's like, wait, you couldn't find 12 good pilots? But like, if you're 11 and it's 1984, this is the greatest concept for a movie ever. Like, it's just so cool. You're in your small town, you play the cool video game, and you get the high score, and you get recruited. And that was great. And the thing is, this movie has so much going for it, except for the lead. I actually looked him up. He he had a steady career. I believe he works to this day, but he is just... I don't even think it's the lead. I'm blaming the lead. It's it's the, the storytelling. Uh, um, uh, uh, if you don't know, because uh, you don't watch my other channel, um, uh, I, I make comics, and... and um, uh, I once one of my early jobs was working with this guy who was um, he was really into there's this thing called Save the Cat. It's about there's like this very, very rigid storytelling formula. And if you follow it, you're a success or not. I mean, there's a million things that don't follow it. And, so, you know, you follow it, your script doesn't get read. And then there's all these gigantic successes that don't follow it. But Save the Cat was like a formula. It's like uh, and it was like. Uh, call to action is like uh, you know accepting the heroic call something like this and it happened it's supposed to happen on like page 11 of a screenplay and it doesn't happen to like page 80 here so i found it very frustrating that this cool adventure was happening he kept rejecting it over and over and over and over until basically like 18 minutes before the end of the movie then that's the end of the credits not the end of the story it's like 15 minutes before the end of the movie but what makes this movie good is not only having just like an awesome concept and some pretty cool, uh, the CG, it has CGI for the space scenes. Um, the spaceship is CGI and looks pretty good. The funny thing is the stuff that doesn't look good is like uh, asteroids. Asteroids don't look good, but the ships look just fine, I, even to this day. Um, uh, one of the other things about this is they, they introduce these alien characters named Centauri. He's kind of like this Carney Barker, uh, almost reminds me of like Stan Lee or something like that. Um, and he he basically recruits this guy and he's, he's just in there for the space shekels. And then they have the other character whose name is Grig. And I remember Grig a lot. And Grig does not get introduced or really become a major point until like the middle of the movie. So the, the I would say it's not just, there's there's pacing issues. This should have gotten to the adventure first. Apparently, it was like there was a lot of reshoots. There's this character named Beta who's like a 
Android copy of Alex who gets left behind. And he seems to be able to do most of the thing that Eric, Alex can do, except for he doesn't have any game. Um, I almost just wondered, like, why didn't they just copy Alex and then use Beta as the to fly the ship? There's there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. But the storyline with Beta on Earth is fun. He's kind of like figuring out being a human. He doesn't understand it. He kind of can get like being a human. He he understands most of it, but like making out, he's like, this woman stuck her tongue in my ear, and he's he's really bothered by it. And I oh I just realized that then he has problems with his ear. Oh, that's why he has to fix his ear because he gets like saliva in his ear and then his hearing's off. Okay, that makes more sense. That's fun. That's one of those things you'd notice on rewatching that would make it fun. So I talked to my buddy who he's like, oh gosh, this is just like my favorite movie. And I was like, well, you know, if I would have, you know, gotten a VHS, I, this probably would have been my favorite movie too as a kid. Um, like I said, I, I kind of had a harsh you know, uh, initial reaction to it. Just like when I finally saw Dark Crystal, I was like, no, no, this is not the movie I remember. It's like, no, no. It's like, if I was seeing 11, when it, all the kids who saw it, they all liked it. Um, and everyone I know who grew up and they had a, what was it? Laser disc or a VHS or a Betamax. They all loved this. So this is a really good movie. As an A movie, you, you could, you could kind of hammer on, oh, you know, the, the arc for the lead character isn't so good. And, you know, some of the pacing is... But as a B movie, oh, it's a B plus. Um, uh, so uh, definitely recommend. Um, I, I had to go rent it on uh, YouTube, Yahoo, YouTube for, you know, whatever, $3.99. Oh, that being said, and I'm actually watching another 80s movie. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to do a video on this. I'm watching Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. And I always talk about how... These days, you know, I work from home and I've got my own business and I watch movies sometimes literally one minute at a time. There is something about the pacing of 80s movies. I'm not even really into planes, trains and automobiles. Like, it's fine. I can watch 20 minutes at a time without stopping, whereas everything made in the last 10 years, I can only watch it like 10 minutes at a time. So I was able to watch this like 10, 15 minutes at a time. Um, so... Whatever, whatever that says about the movie and myself. Uh, so go check it out if you haven't seen it. And if you've, you know, you've got kids or teenagers, I think they're going to love this movie. Um, so uh, go check it out, Last Starfighter. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to watch uh, tomorrow. Who knows? I don't think I'm going to review Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, though. <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye.